Disregarding all stances on morality for the sake of this video, I will be taking a completely objective view of this controversy of game theory. Please do not get offended by the title or content within. The things I say are all concerning the theory and do not necessarily reflect my beliefs. I'm not here to say what's right or wrong, this is completely to delve deeper into whether this is true. With that out of the way, let's begin. Now, Earthbound, as you know, is one of my favorite video games of all time. Quirky humor, unique battle sequences, distinct music, and clever dialogue make this game an absolute standout. With a bright exterior, this game holds as many dark secrets as you can get. But would this game even attempt to take on such a universally controversial topic as abortion? Before that's answered, let's see how far this game is willing to go. Pokey is the first instance this game is not afraid to take risks. Subtle references that are even more apparent in the Japanese version suggest that his parents are abusive. Sound effects of Pokey being punished clearly refer to a beating. His parents' neglect is one of the many reasons people believe he joined forces with Gygas to begin with. The next time we see him, he holds the title of the second hand of a cultist leader known as Carpainter. Their motives are very similar to many extremist groups, to change the world to their liking. This one just happens to want to make everything blue. The kicker is they are willing to do anything to make their dream a reality, even human sacrifice, not to mention that of a little girl. There is no shortage of drug references either. If the battle backgrounds aren't trippy enough for you, after the kids defeat Master Belch and return to Saturn Valley, they take a coffee trip as a monologue by the narrator of the kid's journey plays out to the tune of some very psychedelic music. Another scene is shown later, this time with T. But perhaps the most prominent example is an actual location in the game, an alternate reality to the city of Forside. This realm initiates after Ness hallucinates from being very near a relic known as the Manny Manny statue. Frequent flickering, neon lights take over the city, stranger than normal enemies, people who speak nonsensically and erratically, as well as nightmarish sounds and tones that mirror that of something one would experience during a bad trip. More drug references include bars turned to cafes, non-subtle drunks walking the town, hippies, mushrooms that directly affect free movement and cause you to veer while walking and stumble in battle, magic cake that takes you to a faraway land inaccessible by foot, and traveling into your own subconscious to find yourself. What about sexual references? Not many. The word sexy is used to describe the Runway 5. But more interestingly, after the credits, you can visit Venus's mom in Tucson. If you talk to her, she'll reveal that Venus will be doing a photography book, and states that she hopes Venus will keep her clothes on. Not a big deal, but still worth mentioning just to state that almost every controversial topic has been covered. Violence? Well, there's that too. And I'm not talking about hitting stray dogs with baseball bats. Every kid-friendly game has some sort of battling. Not a big deal at all. The real disturbing part that differentiates Earthbound than other RPGs is a key sequence of events that tasks you with answering yes or no questions. These aren't quiz-related, however. They are your master asking for your permission to have your arms, legs, ears, eyes, and mouth ripped out of you until you only have your mind to communicate with you left. And even that is taken eventually. If you say no to the removal of any of these body parts, you automatically lose the game. Seriously, your character is shown to take damage with each major part removed. When your ears are taken, the audio cuts off entirely. When your eyes are presumably gouged out, the screen fades to black. This is as far as the game goes for being controversial. So what have we learned so far? Nothing is safe from being covered. The range is incredible. And behind its colorful atmosphere lies some of the darkest secrets of gaming. Now we get to Gygus. All theories aside, this final boss will still make the top tens of most disturbing final boss fights of gaming. And this is all for good reason. His erratic speech patterns are unnerving. The cryptic music is unsettling and your surroundings make you feel entirely hopeless to what's happening. He mutters things like, it's not right, not right, and I feel good. 
but it's time to answer the main question. What does this have to do with Gygus being a fetus? Well, in order to fight him, you have to travel back in time. How far back is not specified. When you finally confront him, you have to travel up pulsating tubes that is so different than anything else seen in the game, and finally arrive to the Devil's Machine, which is said to resemble the female reproductive system. During the battle, when Gygus is unleashed, you can see a clear outline of a human fetus in the dead space of the background. It has been debated since the beginning of this theory whether or not this is intentional, but whether you believe it or not, you cannot deny that it does look like one. Even the inspiration behind the creation of the Universal Cosmic Destroyer is disturbing. Shikasato Itoi, the creator of Earthbound, has stated publicly that the idea of Gygus came from a childhood trauma he had when he was little, where he thought he had walked into a rape scene in a movie. It ended up only being a murder, but he was so distraught, his parents became worried about his well-being. One of the lines, it hurts, is believed to come from within the film. The combination of pleasure and pain, and the confliction between them is thought to be why it has been so scarring for young Itoi. But what does this have to do with the abortion theory? We know what he thinks the scene in the film was about, and if it leads to impregnation, that is reason for abortion. The two are absolutely linked, and this game already goes very far with these sorts of topics, so the theory can't and shouldn't be considered far-fetched to any extent. Fans of the game hate this theory and want it to not exist, but it definitely has its reason for being there. A lot to back up the bold statement, and no matter how unbelievable it may sound in conversation, if you know the context of the many controversial things in this game, and how far it's willing to go, the theory seems right at home. I won't say whether I believe it or not, but I can respect the concept, because it's backed up by fact and is very plausible, with many connected things that seem too similar to its accusations to be co coincidental. This may very well be intended by the creator or not, but who knows? There's supporting evidence that this isn't the case at all. The pulsating tubes could be veins connected to a mother brain of sorts, and the background could still absolutely just be an unfortunate and unintentional design flaw. Either way, it's still interesting to contemplate. And that's why we love theories, right? To know for sure would ruin the fun, so it's probably best to just be left a mystery, so it can be forever be something Earthbound fans can argue about. This has been Dark Aspects of Nintendo Games with your host, Thane from Thane Gaming. Thanks everyone, see you next time.